everybody, it's Laia. So we're back with part two of our Quest Love Supreme in Atlanta with Dallas Austin. Now, if you missed part one, that's when Dallas spoke about growing up around some amazing musicians. He talked about his earliest credits and making those big ass hits with Boys to Men and TLC. Make sure you check that out. In the meantime, get ready for this amazing part two. Enjoy. Yo, all right, look, illegal. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Illegal, Dude, y'all oh so stupid. Oh, my God. Uh, no, just stay on illegal. Yeah, I want to oh, hear some yeah, nightmare need, stories. Need, yeah. Because oh, do, you, do you remember the Snoop story in the source? Oh, with, um, when with, Jamal When Jamal makes with, fun of, of yeah. Prince. Right. What, were, what was that like? Because they had beef too. They was beefing against the uh, mob. Everybody, 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 dude. When I first so, so left eye, she she brought me these kids one day to the studio, and she was getting ready to go on the road. She so I got this group. You got to sign in the rowdy. They're dope. They're like a little red man, little track. <laughs> I'm sorry, that and description so, is funny. When they came to the studio. They were finishing each other's sentences. They were like, them dudes was like dope. They was like, yo, no, no, they, they they throwing dice with each other. I'm like, these little dudes is bad as shit. She's like, well, keep them with you. I gotta go on tour. That should have been a strike one, <laughs> right? So y'all know how to play dice. They stay in the studio with me at Dark. We have we have rooms in there, right? So the kids of everybody's loving these kids. Like Eric Sermon, Buster Rhymes, everybody that's in my studio work. Diamond D. Everybody's mm-hmm. working with me already. So the kids come in and they out rapping everybody. They are rapping mm. and cussing and rapping and cussing and you know, head a gut. What you want? Head a gut. Pop yeah. pop. So, and I, nobody's ever seen kids curse like that. And how old is illegal? I forget they when they started. 11, it was like 12, 11. Oh, God. Like, <laughs> cause they, they were, so then yeah. I took them to Arista so Clive could see them. They jump up on the damn conference room table, kick, oh, off, no. kick off everybody's coffee cups. <laughs> Like I'm like okay, I just the original ruined. Bobby Schroeder. Like, I just original. ruined this shit. So like, but then after the class was like amazing, amazing it starts. So I'm like cool. We started to work on this record, right? And so Lisa goes out of town. The two of them about a week later, well, I mean not even a week later, about three or four days later, Malik comes up to me and says, "Yo, man, you got the blunt." I said, what? You 12. I'm not smoking no. What is a blunt, by yeah, the way? And I'm not smoking nothing with you. You said, "What is a blunt?" I didn't even know what it was then. <laughs> Everybody still smoking papers. Man. He dumped the blunt out. He said, okay, he put it out his pocket on his own and his own weed. Dumped it out and started rolling in front of me. I'm like, what? what's going on, man? I got to talk to you, D. He said, he said, this is Malik. He said, that motherfucker Jamal, I don't know him. What? Wait, what? I, I, Wait, I, I wow. said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are y'all, we, had shot the head, we had just shot the, the head of gut video, and then they want to go solo. Because he's like, man, he said, let me tell you something. I don't know this motherfucker. I met him the same day we left eye. We ain't wow. been together like that. I said, wow. what? Oh. He wow. said, yeah. He said, I don't trust that motherfucker. I have to sleep with one eye open. He's 12, by the way. Sounding and, like and the so dude from fucking. Like, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my belly. solo D. I'm going to get my this. So I'm like, hold on, hold on. We just spent, y'all got to do head of gut. We just did the video. We did yeah. Gets Busy. Y'all got to follow this out. You can't go solo right now, right? <laughs> so check this shit out. Right. I took the, the first promo tour started in L.A., Mm. Right, this five hundred thousand dollar promo tour that they got because Clive Davis is going crazy about him, mm. right? Mm. So we, they get to L.A. and they decide that they're gonna stay with Dre and Snoop. Oh, right. oh no. no, no, no! Who let them do? What their parents? Great at? influences. They, they, oh, parents is on the way. Their parents are. <laughs> they had a picnic one day and they don't got with Dre and Snoop, Duh. and they death row. They, they turned dads, the mascots. They turned. Oh, they there, wow. right? So now, Aristos calling me like, "Yo, man, the kids." They won't leave L.A. They're threatening the, the, the BMG reps and everything else. With, hit them with hammers in the head. And, <laughs> you know, they got little guns and all this shit. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, so Clive calls. Is like, Dallas, this is crazy. You have to go get the kids. Wow. I said, I got to go get the kids from where? <laughs> I know that's right. I don't doubt. I ain't you said from death row. You got to go meet with Shug. That sentence don't sound no. right. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Wrong. You can have these little dudes. Right? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Dallas, we have too much money on the table. You have to go get the kids. You go get them, Clyde. So me, yeah, right there. <laughs> so, I'm definitely, so me, my man K. Wells, we go out to death row. We pull, get up in the elevator. Man. Get off the elevator. It's just big dudes everywhere. Ain't no posters. Ain't no plaques. Mm. Ain't no records. I'm stressed. It's just yeah, like, like pan- we was at wood house. paneling walls, right? <laughs> yes. So I walk into the other room. It's a fold-out table, fold-out chair. That's what we should desk and a red silver, I mean, red carpet. That's a death row, like a red round thing, right? But that's it. No, nothing else, right? Oh, my God. So... We walk in there, we're sitting there, so she'll come in. He sits down. He goes, man, what's up, D, man? You know, so good, man. You know artists ain't loyal, man. You know how artists get, man. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> so he's like, the boys got out here with Dre and Snoop, man. And, you know, they just they just want to be on death row now. You know, they just want to do I said, I'll tell you what. 
just give me back what we spent. You can have them. He said, no, no, I was thinking we could do them together. You know, Rowdy Dove Row. Uh-uh, I don't, what? I was like, man, I'm cool on it. I'm like, you can just, just give Clyde back what they spent. You can have them. <laughs> right? I'm just mm-hmm. trying to get out of here. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so he goes, well, man, what? the kids want to see you real quick, man. They want to say, hey. You know, so they come out of the, they come out of the wall. <laughs> they look like... <laughs> They wall, came out the wall, the, the wall like pat- the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard. The panel wall open up, and these little dudes now they're about 13, 14. They still can't drive, right? All right. Mm-hmm. 13, 14. So they're like as high as I don't know what. Hey man, Dallas, it ain't me, it's him, man. It ain't me, it's you, niggas. It ain't me, it ain't them. And they are high on Sherm or whatever it is. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. We can work this out later. I'm just let me get out of here, right? So I get back to Atlanta. Two days later, Malik shows up. Party over? Oh yeah, he's like, no, no, I can, I, I can deal out there. He says, let me tell you something, man. Jamal Grandma put some roots on me. What, what, what huh? Yeah, you say what a legal story you hear. But Jamal Grandma put some roots on me. I said, what are you talking about, man? He's like, man. Uh, well, I'm just telling you like this, man. My shit swelled up. And I said, so that's because you out there with Death Row, uh, probably messing with them little, little girls, or whatever. <laughs> Not wrapping it up, B. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, this is how you talk to you too. No, I'm a virgin, my nigga. Oh. <laughs> 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 and that is our clip for the Dallas Austin episode. The next quest left supreme. Oh, so like, talking about, but check this out. It gets even worse. So he says, so I went to the doctor. Daz took me to the doctor. He yeah. said, so the doctor said they didn't know what this was. What happened to me? So then he said, Daz and Club said we gotta take you to this lady in the hood. Uh-uh. So you take her to the lady in the hood. The lady in the hood says, oh yeah, yeah. Somebody put some on you. You need to take a bath in this milk or the stuff you gave me. He says, so I did that. They went down. I got my ass on the plane, and here I am. I'm here, ready to do my solo record. <laughs> Solo record. Nah, okay, we still are we there? We no. Can't. Okay. <laughs> nah, now the other part about this is, meanwhile, they got a record out. Gets busy. They got head of gut out, and and Arista is just trying to do everything they can to push the guys that they can't get a hold to. I remember it was the red tape. I had the red, red tape. Red yep. tape yeah. We get all the way through the whole. Now they never went on no promo tour. That all got kicked out of the window from them being crazy or whatever. Out, they stayed out mm-hmm. in death row that long. Well, we get to the the, the Billboard Awards that year. Uh, right now, Clive Davis is getting twenty something awards that year. He's getting all the Whitney Houston's. All he know, he just rack. He's just doing this thing, you know. So, rap category come up. <laughs> cool like that. Diggable planets. Yeah. Uh, Hip hop array. <laughs> Nothing by <right>. nature. <laughs> right. We gets busy. Legal. People like okay. And the winner is illegal. We gets busy. Stop it. I thought that was the whole point. Wait, what? what? I thought that was the whole point. Wait. The fix is in. You can see us looking Clyde. at each other like, <laughs> like you a bad now, boy. Now, if the kids did what they were supposed to do, it would have made sense, mm-hmm. right? Because they would have went on the promo tours Damn. and people would have got, you know, they would have been blown up. But Clive got to put his bids in. You know, Early. Yeah. yeah. It was almost embarrassing. <laughs> like, oh you God. know he wasn't as big as Diggable Planets or oh, Hip Hop Ray. Because Jamal yeah. ended up getting the solo deal. Jamal, both of them did. So uh, Malik ended up doing his solo deal. We did that. Malik goes on. I like Faye uh, Jamal. Jamal did yeah, Faye Jamal. Jamal. Keep It Real was the one, though. Yep, that was Keep the It Real. And they were, they were again, on that strike, they could have been, they were writing their own stuff. I had the publishing company set up for them oh, as kids. Okay. Um, I'm afraid to ask this that question. Me, yeah, please. I want you to ask it. I want to know, too. Go ahead. Where are they now? Oh, my God. Can they, you say something sweet? They're please around say. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're breathing. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. all that matters. No, that's no, I see ja- we see Jamal every now and then, but okay. I, they have had times with me before. They was like, man, we fucked up. We sorry, man. We just, I mean, they were doing all kinds of cake. Pistols and like you know, driving cars into people's houses, stealing the engineers' cars, sitting on pillows, driving the engineer cars to North Carolina. Like Lisa just chilling. Right. Right. She told yeah. me they were like, I, I feel like they've been so together. Sweet. Now everybody yeah, that sees them, everybody that sees the kids, instantly fall in love with them because they oh. gamble. They like the coolest little dudes. They just they. It's cute if you spend a little time with them, yeah. but not when you invested five hundred thousand dollars. No man, like so, five hundred dollars. That was that was cute. Damn, I hate to ask about y'all so stupid. Y'all so stupid was cool because they were like, you know, they're like our far side. They were like skateboarding mm-hmm. and drawing and doing graffiti and doing art. And, you know, and so H2O still does the same thing, still yeah. doing art and drawing. And How was, uh, the, you did, yeah, was the King and I that was on? The King yeah, and I, yeah, too. Yeah, what, man. what was they like? They were cool because they were just out of New York. And it was just like, you know, Majesty was doing stuff, uh, doing a lot of production back then. And right. I think he was in Juice or something back then, too. Oh, was this rapid um, fire? Well, it's not. I mean, we're going down the okay. Because I wanted to ask you about India Davenport, but what, that's way later. Da- okay, I didn't know what we were doing. But we did skip <laughs> Highland Place mobsters. Oh, oh yeah. There's always a point where we ask, like, if the producers <laughs> themselves get 
their own project out or whatever. But mm. I personally liked Let's Get Naked. Yeah, the Hollow Place Monsters was crazy because the guy, uh, Chip, who was the lead singer. Who's... I heard he actually would get naked. He would get naked on stage, and um, <laughs> then this is the time where that wasn't really cool like that, right? So like right. the first show we ever did, we did here in Atlanta, and the song "Let's Get Naked," and he, he's he's different. This guy, he's, he's very very different. I gotta, very, I gotta very Google. Different. I don't remember. I, I heard this afraid. They called him the maniac in the group, and he always had on a straight jacket. But I would have said they were way crazier Jodeci. Like what? Oh yeah, yeah. What yeah. I wanted Jodeci to be for fast songs. Uh-huh. That's yeah. what Highland yeah. Place mops. Mm-hmm. Like jo- yeah. besides get on up, jo- Jodeci never had the fast song nah. that like engaged me. So they I saw them as a bad the right to like they third out. But these guys. But the bad boy, the bad hide, your, boy hide your daughters group yeah. was Highland Place yeah. mobsters, yeah. and that shit should have made it. And Chip is like he. This is this what is what kind of this how the kind of demise went down. <laughs> so okay, we we we, we did the show at the BRE. Yeah. Remember BRE? Yeah. Yes. And so I was telling him, like, okay, on this show at the BRE, you cannot take your overalls down. Because he'll snap the overalls, man. They just come down, and he's just butt-ass naked with his socks on. No draws. So no you draws. just told him to get naked. I get it. Oh. No, I, I, because he had did this before at, at one show we did. And he, when he did it in Atlanta, I was fu- I had to be... I'm chasing him around the stage, like trying to hold it trying to hold the overall, overall the strap yeah. up. <laughs> but he, but I couldn't. So in Atlanta, he had jumped out on the rafters of the, uh, you know how the light rafters be in front of the stage too. So he's yeah, now yeah. here on the rafters and he just butt naked. My mom, everybody's in the audience, kids. It's just, you know. So it, it went, it went across well on the sky page back then because everybody's talking about, it. yo, you seen the Holland Place Monster show? You seen the Holland Place Monster show? So there's like, there's the gift and the curse. Cause like, okay, now you guys got to perform at BRE. I'm like, <sighs> wow. Like, I said, but well, that's black radio exclusive. That's going to be like crazy. Yeah, yeah, you got to, though. We need to do it. So we go to do it. And when we get there. It's so all the Helen Littles tell, of the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. I, yeah. So we get there. The stage is like this. Uh-huh. So it's not high enough. So I'm telling him off the bat, yo, my man, okay, you don't drink no O.E. tonight. And do not take your clothes off on the oh, stage. Like, these are black radio people. He's like, oh, man, I got it, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I go to the damn room, right? We're doing an interview with Cynthia Horner yes, at the time. Wow. Right on, right, right on. Yes. yes. He doing an interview with her. I look at him. He's licking and doing that. Yeah. So I'm like, what is he doing? He got a eight, he got a 84 ounce handcuffed to his hand of old, what? old English, like a big apple juice jug of old E. Handcuffed to his juice hand. Jug. Yes, because it had a little ring, and that's why he put the handcuff shit. in. And he had that handcuff to his hand. He's like, Dallas, man, I got this shit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, we're about to go on stage like this. So we go to the stage, and he got that damn thing handcuffed to his hand, right? <laughs> So finally get the I get the old E off of him. I said, man, you can't jump around with this thing. Gonna take it off. So okay, okay. Now he sings like Sam Cook or somebody like Tan yes. Trent DRB, like Tan right, Trent, Tan real yeah. like raspy, raspy, real soulful soul. voice, right? Absolutely. So we make it through one song, mm-hmm. and then um, we get to let's get naked. And Wait, time out. Like, will you stop looking for naked photos? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, because y'all not women, so I don't know what, if their response is really better than Dallas is saying and he hating. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm, my bad. She's sorry. literally like, like five minutes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just seeing this. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So he's jumping around the stage on Let's Get Naked, and I see him taking off his damn thing. So I got a guitar on, by the way. So I'm just like chasing the around the stage, holding on to that damn thing, right? So he decides that. Because, you know, I'm holding on to him like that, that he's going to stage dive. Oh. Right? He stage dive, but he still had the top, he still he had, had the bottom it. part of the overalls on because I was doing this mm-hmm. when he stage dive. He stage dives and he jumps out to the audience and, and lands on somebody. Right? Yeah. Right. The stage is like this tall, so I, I told him, don't well. stage dive. It's not high enough, right? Well, we get to finish the performance. We go upstairs. All of a sudden, like, L.A. and Babyface come come running upstairs. Let us in. Two. Get in. Yo, she igniting them downstairs, and they're looking for the boy with the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, he has a group called Poor Broken Lonely, and he landed on the girl's neck. Oh, and boy. she's at the hospital. So wow. Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, and everybody with them is ready to kill all y'all. Oh. So <laughs> we're like, oh, shit. Now, Elliot Babyface, we got another knock at the door with Suge came. Elliot Babyface ran the bathroom. Oh, my boy. Shut the door. <laughs> we like, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Breathe. Yeah. Suge at the door. Like, yo, open the door. We're trying to get to the blonde nigga. Open the door. Try to get to the blonde dude. So now Chip, who's nobody to be, he's crazy too. He's out of his mind. I met him Clearly. with machine guns, and he's crazy. Karate, all this. So first he turned into, 
Let's go check it out, man, to see if the girl's all right. Said, what? No, you don't want to go out there. They're trying to kill the blonde dude. We're bringing the motherfuckers in here then. Let's go. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so we got to calm this down. Well, at this point, the police then came up and took Dre and Shug, uh, you know, said, y'all got to get out of hallways because they were beating on the doors and stuff. We were going to wait in the lobby before they come downstairs. Uh, police came in. They said, look, we got a problem. Um, it's about 200 people in red <laughs> down downstairs oh. waiting, oh. waiting on y'all. So we're going to need y'all to leave. And we're going to take y'all down through the kitchen and put y'all on the bus, and y'all go to Atlanta. So they wow. had we, we walk out. It's police lined up all down the hallways, right? We get on the bus, take off, get to Atlanta. I mean, take off to get out of there. And then that was this, I don't know if y'all remember this, but they got into a riot in that VRE that time in the hotel room, and they, I mean, in the hotel lobby, and they brought the horses in. Oh, and shit. they had people, they were hitting familiar. them with the sticks I and stuff I, to get yeah. them out of there. It was a big mess. Wasn't it also Luke-related? Yep. Yeah, okay. I remember Luke telling the story. Yep. So then that too. distracted them? That was all, yeah. All that was going on. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. after that, the Hollow Place monster was like... <laughs> <laughs> was a rap. It was a rap. <laughs> nah, I've heard that same story. My man Eric Robeson, he was at that event. Shut now, he, up. Didn't know he told me damn near verbatim, word for word, told me that same story like 10 years ago. So, oh yeah. my God. Dude, like... Okay, so th this answers my question. Like, we were big to go to these Jack the Rappers, yep. How Can I Be Down mm -hmm. events, and the label would never let us go. Yep. And now I get the sneaky suspicion that that was orchestrated because they were scared for you. It was, yeah, it yeah. wasn't always like that. But look, this is who Dallas roll with. It started to get like, you know, as, it, as, as time went on and music started to change, well, it started yeah. to get a little more like that because you're gonna have the gangsters showing up and you know they're not showing up by themselves they're gonna bring the whole airplane okay. and everybody oh else speaking of gangsters uh your relationship or uh dealing with uh god haitian jack oh jack <sighs> man <laughs> you know haitian jack oh yeah wait how that do you know he knows haitian jack? <laughs> haitian jack he talks about it on this uh in the uh oh, the FX, the documentary, he spent yeah. time in atlanta yeah yeah, yeah. yeah That's jack right. yeah oh i didn't watch that shit He's... it was good it's like it's thorough it's i didn't know but when i first met him he was down you know he was down in atlanta he had his 850 <sighs> And I think they were like, they were they were they were notorious. They they wasn't really like dope boys. They were like getting the dope boys or whatever. They was taking the money. Mm -hmm. So they was in Atlanta, and um, me and him got cool. Like you know, everybody kind of liked me, you know, because I don't mess Are with nobody like that. Are you the crazy magnet? You know, like, like how do you not? <laughs> like literally, everyone that you work with has a level of edge. Yeah. That. They, Mine is boys to men. I mean, T.I. I'm a T.I. So maybe not birds of a feather yeah, flock I mean, yeah. together. No, they just, they just, they like, you know, they feel safe. I'm in the music mm -hmm. business. I'm cool. I ain't really like with no, you know. So they feel like they, they want to protect you, you know. And that's my yeah, man yeah. kind of thing. So like, I was in New York uh, with with Jack for the first time when I when I met him in New York, and uh, he was like, man, you know, I'm gonna take you to uh, what was it, the, the supper club. Okay. okay. So we go there and we standing outside in the line and, and Jack's trying to, you know, say to the guys, Hey, you know, I got my, my guest here, I got Dallas here, and we're getting the tape tell Vincent I'm here, whatever, right? So the guy ain't coming. This is when I really thought started to realize who this was. The guy's not showing up. So Jack's like, Yo, did you tell Vincent I'm out here? He's like, he's like Yeah, yeah, man, Jack, he said, Hold up. He's like, All right, I I tell you what, you tell him I'm coming back and I'm shutting this motherfucker down. <laughs> everybody in the everybody in the <laughs> line that was standing outside, they just started to leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. And I was like, okay, okay. Then the dude came running up. No, Jack, 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 Jack. Tell me about it. So I'm like, who the fuck is this dude? You know? Um, and then as I started working with Madonna, people mm -hmm. like that, then Jack, yeah. Jack mm -hmm. started to be around dating. me in that. Yeah. And, you know, me and I, I did not out. know that. And Wait, then, what? Yeah, I did not Jack, know yeah, that yeah, either. They was, they used to date, Haitian yeah. Jack and Madonna? Yeah. Yo, she's, she's, is that she's, the, in the words, in the words of, in the, yeah. Well, it came from me first. And then I, I was afraid to ask. Yeah, because we're was, kind of friends, but I feel yeah. like you know the edge of your Madonna. Yeah, I got. We was hanging out a little bit first. Uh, friendly or Madonna? To, yeah, trying to see. Yeah, yeah. And, but then it was after that, Rodman and Jack and Tupac. Mm -hmm. All that was in that same kind of little circle where she was trying to have a little edge at the time. Oh. She was trying to be in the streets. At so the you time. gave her yeah. the first taste brown, then she be like, "That brown Something is like nice." That. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But then Jack got a hold to it. I mean, it was this. This is a funny story. So. After I finished working on the album, um, Madonna took the record and mixed it with Nelly Hooper. Nelly mm -hmm. Hooper, so, right? so. But I was supposed to go out and mix it on that date. So it was like, August 20th, we're mixing the record, come to L.A. All right, it's all right, cool. And when I'm going there, she's like, well, I already mixed it. I already mixed uh, the album with Nelly, and it's coming out, and here it is. Sent it to me. So I was like, what? How you going to take my stuff and mix it? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm pissed off. I don't even want to talk to you no more. You don't take my joints and all this. So then I'm in New York. 
and I'm riding with Jack. And he goes, uh, that's the phone. Yeah, yeah, I'm with Dallas. He's right here. I said, hey, Madonna wants you to come by and hear the album, man. She said, said she really wants you to come by the house, man. She really wants you to come here. I said, I'm not trying to go over there. Yeah, he said, he don't want to come out there. She said, please, man, just come by. I said, why am I talking to you to, 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 to talk to Madonna right, right, right. <laughs> on the phone, right? So we getting up going over the house to listen to the record. And um, I was like, uh, it was just weird because I'm sitting there listening to the song. I said, well, you know what? You didn't just mess up my mixes. You messed up everybody's mixes. So I feel all right. And then she was <laughs> I was like, going to say, are you allowed to be honest? Uh, 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 yeah. I okay. mean, I was pissed off. Um and this is what record is this? Human Nature. This is a uh, secret. This secret. is survival. Oh, this is oh, like okay. we had did all these songs together, um, and it just started going south, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, like I, I, I we ended up making up because we had, we had it was just like firing at one point. I, I wish I still had the letter that she wrote me. Um, <laughs> she that, wrote letters. Yeah, she wrote then, one to Tupac too. It's in this Michigan Museum. She uh, wrote me a letter yeah. going off over there. How I, I should understand her struggle because it's the same as like the black man and Yo, this and the other. On. And boy, I went firing back. You man, you chugging up that other <laughs> right. So then after about, but after a few years, <laughs> it was like you know what? I don't have no bad energy with nobody on the planet, and I don't want none. And so one day I called her. She was doing like a Vita or something. I just called out of oh, the blue wow. and I was like, "Hey," she's like, "Uh oh, what did I do to deserve this call now?" And I'm like, "Nope, it's your record. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot from you." As long as it turned out the way you wanted it to be, I should be happy with that mm -hmm. because it ain't. It's, it's up to you. It's your record. I'm working for you on that. Probably so I want to. I want to squash this the energy, and let's just be cool. And then from that point was was good. Do you think that was like was that the first time you learned that lesson as a producer of just learning just to let things go? Yeah. Well, the boys, the men, when they put out the the, 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 the when they put out the uh, the rough the rough mixes, oh, the rough I had mixes. to let that one go because I wouldn't even listen to it. I didn't listen to that record for years. I was selling millions of records, and then just like my mom was working at Disses at Barbecue too, so I was like in bad contracts. So uh, I really wanted my stuff to be like what Teddy's would sound like, or what some what you know the other records I would hear would sound like. And when they put that out, I was just like, that's one. So then working with her was another one. I had I had, I had a lot of humbling experiences because when you come from being a creator. And then you get to the label side. You have to look at it both ways, you know. Wait, so, so even Motown Philly was a rough mix? Rough mix. I mean, you kind of acknowledge now, like, it's effective and a banger, but the, the version in your mind was way bigger or? Yeah, it was like, you know, I had drums still on four tracks instead of having them all separated. Yeah, Trevor, yeah. Okay, yeah, I feel you there. You know what oh, I'm saying? question. Uh, was It's So Hard to Say Goodbye yesterday, was that always an acapella? Or did you initially have music behind it and stripped it? It was always a cappella. I just did <laughs> put it like a bass and the, um, and the snaps to it and kind of let the ooze and stuff be the, the, the music to it. Okay. Um, oh, man. Uh, one of the producers used to run with me, Spearhead X. Oh, yeah. What's up with That's who just know? called me when they called me. Maybe went off. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Word, okay. <laughs> What's he up to these days? He has man? a coalition DJs. They're the biggest DJ group around. Oh, so he, if you got records that oh, you need wow. to get placed and play in the strip clubs, whatever, that's X. And he was he was my A and R for like all the y'all so stupid. Yeah, because he did what you call on the legal album, the, uh, the yep, lights, the camera legal record. record. Yeah, yeah. Record. Can we talk joy? Oh, Sunshine yeah, yeah, yeah. and rain, joy. Oh man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Pendulum vibe. Yeah. Don't, Don't say nothing. I ain't know what what This is like this is like <laughs> Snoop now. <laughs> yeah. He's trying. He know he gotta be in the no. like Pendulum vibe. Go in. Look. Yeah. She. It was. It was. Pendulum vibe. That was. It was cool because during that time, you know how it was with D'Angelo and Joy, and like it was just that phase of what they started to call Neo Soul that was coming out of uh, Yin Yang out here. Yin Yang Cafe. The yeah. Yin Yang Cafe had everybody mm -hmm. in there. It was mm -hmm. like, and that's when I think music, it, that's before that actually started to come out as Neo Soul when you have NDRE and Joy and um, Erica and everybody's kind of playing in Yin Yang. Yeah. Um, and funk jazz. Yeah. And when we did the Sunshine and the Rain record, or just the whole record, it was such a different record for what I was working on at the time. I didn't want to go do the same. I never wanted to do the same thing on anybody. It, like, I kind of couldn't. I didn't know how to do it. So I would just go do whatever that person was. I would produce that person. And Joy was just like full on. Uh, she, she, she she brought so much knowledge of stuff I didn't know at the table, like the Betty Davises Betty and Davis, stuff. Yeah. And like, mm -hmm. and just being her own element that it just, it was amazing. And she's just one of those artists that, you know, I think for, for you know, when you, Somebody's gonna keep it real. They can keep yeah. it one hundred percent on the ground. They don't care. Fishbone was the same way, you know. I had I talked to Fishbone one time and say, uh, I wanted them to do Spirits of the Material World over, right? Ah, uh, wow. Because I was like, we at Arista, bro. All right, we got a deal at Arista. 
We could do the whole punk album. We could do alcoholic. We can do everything. But just give me spirits of material world so the club them can take it and do something with it. Like, man, that's that been crazy. He's like, no, man, that's the police. That ain't real ska, bro. Oh, man. And I'm like, we ain't selling out. I'm like, but I know, but we at Arista now. You just did Lollapalooza last year with Swim, and you were huge with that record. Right. So let's keep, keep going. You're Fishbone. Nobody cares if you sing a Garth Brooks record. You're still Fishbone, still right? Fishbone, yeah. So they wouldn't do it. And then um, uh, I ran into Flea, and they had just did Roller Coaster. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, and we all in the studio, and I said, yo, man, so did y'all feel like y'all sold out the roller coaster? He's like, nah, man, we had fun. MTV wanted it. It was cool. And I said, so I'm trying to get Fishbone to get, because we did alternative, and I understand it, because I grew up in alternative to the max. I was mm -hmm. just like, I, didn't, I was that guy. Um, but I also grew up watching alternative turn big and become the mainstream. Right. And it turned with the Chili Peppers, the difference mm -hmm. in them doing uh, the George Clinton records and doing the records with Rick Rubin. Right. Yeah. You know, alternative went to another spot. And that's why even with even with Joy's and I think a lot of the artists that, you know, they have a certain kind of integrity they just don't want to cross over into doing anything that doesn't feel, feel like, like they them. compromise themselves. They feel like they compromise themselves. What was the deal with her second album, uh, the Bieber Cleansing Syndrome? Kind of the same. We, you know. Because um, when it, not, it, because it never got officially Released, what, it never what? got officially released because in between that time, you know, and then EMI around the same time starts to say, okay, now we, you know, stuff is happening. We have D'Angelo's and we have this. Now we need more of this and that. Mm -hmm. When you start to say that to an artist, they just be like, <sighs> especially the artist like Joy, because she feels like she was a spearhead of a lot of it. Oh yeah, you yeah. know, so it's kind of hard to take her, tell her to go back and do something, you know, that she didn't want to, that she didn't feel like doing. Time to smile. That was my one on that record. I love Time that to song. smile. That yeah, was a great man. Song, man. Um, you know, you worked with. Back when he was still Terrence Trent Darby. Sananda. Now What's his Sananda. name? Sananda Matreya. <laughs> Sananda Matreya. <laughs> Sananda Matreya, yeah. Okay. What was he... Th Yo, it just hit me that you literally have every eccentric artist ever. Because <laughs> next I'm going to Michael Jackson. But what was it like working with him? It was a trip because he, so he, he had just turned himself into Sananda. So he was in that middle kind of... Thing. You know, he had a dream where the angel came and told him they needed to change his name, and he he did it. And so, but his, as soon as you hear him sing, yeah, it's like when you hear that voice, it's like when I was working with Duran Duran, as soon as you hear that voice, like the Simon, you're like, oh man, that it just resonates mm -hmm. instantly to you. And you're, you're like, and he was amazing. He's like, I think he was still one of the artists that at that time when we worked together. You know, coming off of all the success. When you get when, uh, in that era, when you got a lot, a lot, a lot of success like that, some people just start hating it. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with Kurt Cobain and them. The people just started hating the success and then they didn't want to. So that's that's why I feel like he, sometimes when they do that, they don't want to make the best record. Self sabotage. There's a lot of self saboteur yeah. and all that. But for you, like, I don't know, it's risky. And, you know, I always say on this show, I'm, I don't think I'm, I used to not be the, like a people person producer, so I never like doing vocals. I like yeah. doing everything but vocals. Who's it? Who's your ease? Because uh, uh, actually, let me add Aretha Franklin in this. <laughs> Based on that, who is your i? Who is your ideal uh, uh, subject that you work with? They take your constructive criticism good, and who can't you tell anything to? Nope, I'm doing one take or whatever. Or like, oh, Janet Jackson was the easiest one. Okay, she's the easiest person I ever worked with. Really? So yes, Dallas. What do you want, Dallas? What do you want, Dallas? Yes, Dallas. Yes, Dallas. Yes, Dallas. Yes. I mean, not one throwback or nothing. <laughs> um, Who's the? And then Taskmaster. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the hardest one I probably worked with was Macy Gray. Macy Gray. Really? Yeah. Based on what? I mean, I'm not trying to be it's reductive, it, but... It, 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 she was just in the epitome of a Macy moment, I think, you know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's it was, You never know which is a different day. Dude, it was insane. Um, but it was... It, you know, it, it, it's because also... She's a, she's our own artist with her own, like, you know, you show up to the studio, we're supposed to be there at three, she's already there at one with musicians that's been sitting around forever, like, just, like... And then they're doing their own thing. Like, hold on, wait. And the label is busy going Dallas. Get control of everything. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I thought I had it. I know that she's going to be able to hold me. Um, but, it, you know, I, I've never really worked with anybody that I try to I try to source that out before, mm -hmm. you know, like if we're going to have good energy or not. Because sitting in a room with people like that, you know, that's not what we do it for. You know, I don't I do not do this to have drama or trouble. I try to make the best music we can make with somebody who gets it and, you know, 
<laughs> um, so I, that, I've never really had a bad, bad one. You know, Deion Sanders must be the money. Were you in there? <laughs> yeah, for knew it was coming. You knew joint? it was coming. You Come knew it was on, coming. man. <laughs> I keep going back to Suge Knight in my stories, don't I? Okay. So, two? And yeah. Two? Oh. So Suge's so, so at the studio, and we're working on. He, I mean, Dion's working on, on. He's being on death row. Uh huh. Right. Because oh, Hammer God. was. Okay. He was wearing the Hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hammer went to death row, right? right? right. So she comes to the studio, and he goes, "Yo, man." Deion Sanders really wants you to do this record. It must be the music over. It must be the money. And I was like, oh, no, man. I, that's, that's probably not a good idea, you know. <laughs> He's like, well. You felt comfortable saying no? Well, I, I just said that probably is not a good idea. That's a guess. That's not <laughs> no. So then he, he, he had a book, uh, a photo album full of cars. He opened it up. There's Lamborghinis. There's Rolls Royces. There's Ferraris. That's all he said. <laughs> Pick, Pick one. one. So good, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to take a car. You know, I don't want to be indebted, you know, <laughs> right, something right. like that. I understand. You know, so he said, all right, all right, all right, I got you, I got you. So he gets on the phone. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, shit, I just want this to be over with. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, you're a daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. So then he gets back in the phone, he comes back in. He goes, man, look, Dion wants you to do the record. He really wants you to do the record. By that time, I was about to just say, okay, right? Okay, right. Like, we'll pick it out. But he goes, um, so what if I do this, man? I give you $250,000 right now. I said, to do must be the music over? He said, yeah. I said, I got that record in the back. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this now. Let's yeah. get to it. I, you want it tonight? <laughs> so right. right. <laughs> it was the fastest record I ever did with the fastest money I ever made and the most money I ever made on any song. To what? tell you, like, for as in an terms, advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advance, like, yeah. yeah. Produce advance. Like, wow. And uh, he was That's happy surprising. with it, and Dion was happy with it, and everybody's happy with hey, it. Hey, man, that <laughs> shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. First of all, I didn't even know you, you know, did. Exactly. I found it later. But yeah, it wasn't. That was one of those things where I don't think anyone was expecting Dion to like bar mm. up. You know what I mean? So to us, it was just funny to us. You know what I mean? Oh my god! Yeah, like it, we'd be singing it because he had to rant at the end. <laughs> they say money ain't gonna change me. It's gonna change me. It's gonna change my address. It's gonna change my bank account. It's, it's so gonna good. change my leather shoes, the Gators. Like I had. I, Are yeah, you telling? I, all, right, all right, now talk shit on the last. <laughs> <on the finger. laughs> Shout out to Deion Sanders and his Shout evolution. Shout out to Deion. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, Coach yeah. Pride. Hell yeah. Okay. For real. All right. Yo, let's go to it. Michael. Oh, yeah. Now, how many songs did you do for history? I worked on Blood on the Dance Floor. They don't care about us too bad this time around. Um, uh, probably a couple other well, ones you, that we did. But I meant the ones that around. are somewhere in the vaults. Like It's a couple of them in the vaults, just tracks. Yeah. Really? But what's crazy is I got him on. I still got his beatboxing. Because he would beatbox into the uh, thing to show you what he wanted to tell us. I need boom, chicky, kaka, tika, tika, boom, jacket, tika, boom, chicky, tika. Okay. So I would sample that. Yeah. And keep yeah. It. So, <laughs> keep it. <laughs> so I got his beatbox. Percussion. Now, okay, I'm so glad that the cameras are here. But here's the deal. Now, at the time, this is probably the first time that I'm a little lukewarm on a Michael record. Because every album of Michael Jackson is like it's a an goddamn event. event. Yeah. Maybe it's just that this is the first Michael record. That it was because they in my twenties, yeah, yeah, and all that stuff. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm a diehard fan to the end, but you know, I also understand that he's probably been working on it for some time. Yeah, and too bad. Just I finally warmed up to it maybe three years ago because mm -hmm. I initially thought Jam and Lewis did it, but the thing that always killed, like I know Michael's a dancer, mm -hmm. and I know he wants. An audio accountability of however his bones move. Yep. So the particular rhythm in Too Bad was just. Yep. Like I, I can <laughs> do it again. Oh. <laughs> you got that, right? <laughs> okay. But what's but funny is he'll tell you he don't. He'll tell you that he doesn't want the same thing. Like, right. I want to do something different. And then it, he winds up being it, the same. Got to get back to that. So the thing is, is that. History is not a bad record. And this is and this is why I applaud what Beyonce did. Because you know, I, you know, I heard a record in the car, I heard a record on the headphones, on my computer, whatever. But when I went to the nightclub and they played it three times, so the second time I was like, let me not stand next to them yeah. and go on the other side and see how people reacted to it. They played the entire record. And she achieved something that I know that Michael's been dying to do, which is can I put a record on that's high adrenaline that lasts from beginning to end? Yeah. 
She managed to do it because she managed the highs and the lows part, which for Michael Jackson always felt like every song has to be adrenaline, has to be adrenaline. Yeah, it's no dynamic. Be. So, yeah, by the time you get to the seventh song, you're already worn out because it's not like anything's executed <laughs> bad or whatever, but just in one full the setting. Presentation, yeah. It's, it's like four gras. Like, he's stuffing you with... Mm. <laughs> and by the time I got... You know, I just... I heard Too Bad on its own. Thought Jimmy Jam and... T and but the thing is, is that the rhythm of that song can only be for a person that walks like Michael Dantner. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to at least. How did you craft whatever that? Ri now I got to play it. But how how do you craft something with Michael Jackson if you're not a band playing it? Like that's him sitting there doing that. Like he he does all that. He'll be in there with you doing the. This is how I wanted to feel, or this is how I wanted to, and he said, "Add more sticks, add more sticks." Tick it, tick it, cock it, tick it, tick it, tick But his, his, you know, I think like anything else though, his, um, that when I when I walked when I walked when I walked in the room, when I first worked with Michael, it was like with Bruce Sweetie and them, and then I said, "Well, you know what? This isn't really my vibe." So I left and went back home. When I came back. <laughs> You were allowed to, that's the one person you walked away from? <laughs> yeah, I was just like, it was too much going, like, you know, Bruce Wadeen and Renee Moore was working with him, and it was kind of like. Renee and Angela Renee Moore? Yeah, and they wow. had their own little things going on, you know. They, they, the project's huge, so they, they got how their own he, little side hustles going. The energy is not good. The energy was not, yeah. not good, you know. So I left my home. Michael called me back and was like, Dallas, why did you leave? I was like, well, you know, I was at the studio with those guys, and I'm not really going to be a part of what's going on over there. And he's like, oh, no, no, well, come back and work over here with me at this studio. I'm in the studio here, and, and Jimmy Jam and them was here. I said, oh, yeah, that's what I want to be. So mm -hmm. I come back, and I walk in the room, and Jimmy Jam is in there. And he's playing, uh, and I see him, and I I just fanned out. I was just like, <gasps> Jimmy Jam, man, you don't understand. I, it wasn't for you. I wouldn't know how to play keyboards. It wasn't for you. I wasn't Wait, that's that. the first I was, time you're was, meeting him? I had seen him, at, like, before. Like, <laughs> I, no, first time I met him was at Flight Time when they, when they had Rhythm Nation, right. um, the Rhythm Nation premiere of it. Mm -hmm. And I got so depressed, I just wanted to kill myself. I was just like, <laughs> I, I, I went to flight time. I, they had they was showing the knowledge videos and the whole Rhythm yeah. Nation eighteen fourteen thing, and I was just outside, just like, like crying. I was like, I'm never gonna be this good. This is awful. Like, I don't know. That's that's when I did the one of TLC tip record. I was like, got to make it where you can see it, where it's a little more vivid. That put you know? the battery in your pack. So okay. I had, so when I saw him at, and um with Michael, I was just like, yo man, what? He had to be like, this is Michael. And I was like, Michael, hey man, Jimmy Jam. So, right, uh -huh. so, and I felt like Michael didn't get enough uh, energy from me that time. So he, um, and then he played Scream, and I was just like, oh, oh here yeah. I go again. God damn, what I did I just hear? He's like, bang, 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 bang. Mm. and I was like, okay, now how am I gonna, what am I gonna do now? Like, cause this shit just sounds crazy, you know? And then it's Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis doing Michael Jackson, so it's like, I, I was just kind of lost for it. So then he took me, you know, took us in this room after a while, and it, like you know, a room where you have all your like teddy bears and your, right. you know, if you're gonna be in a studio for a long time, it's like your room, your lounge. Yeah. And this dude just start putting in tapes, like he's like, so so this is when I was like, you know, there's three hundred thousand people outside and three hundred thousand people inside, and you know, this is, and and so you see him chant Michael, Michael. He carries his own highlight reels. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> After he took that out, I'm, he's like, oh, shit, that's him. Then he put in another one. And this is when, boom, you're looking at it, and it's African people. Michael, Michael, that's all they can say. And he's like, I was building hospitals. And oh, and this is me with Charlie Chaplin. So every time he's sticking another tape, I stop being like scared to look at him because I'm like, that's that motherfucker. You know? right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's working. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the last one he put in was, the, uh, I don't know if you've seen this before, but it was it's him sitting at the piano. And he's singing "I'll Be There," and he has a tank top on, mm. and it's like doing the like remember the time kind of phase, right? Right. Um, and then he keeps seeing little Michael saying "I'll Be There," and he's in the doorway. He looks back, and little Michael is in the oh, doorway. The Pepsi commercial, right? It's a Pepsi commercial. <laughs> but at that time, he shot it as a like he's, he he would shoot commercials like that as demos, and then wouldn't even use them. What? And like he shot that on his own and sold it to Pepsi. Yeah. What? Wow. And it says something like "Isn't it good to be great" or something on it. But he was so like uh, doing the doing the project. He was just so you know adamant about being paranoid. He was paranoid in a different way because that's the history record, you know. I, I was going to ask about they don't care about us, yeah. and also this time around, were you there for uh, when they tracked Big's uh, vocal? Oh yeah, me and Big is sitting in the car outside Larrabee. Um, I called Puff and I was like, "Yo, um, first I asked Michael. He said, "What a rapper for this song? I want somebody that's really street, you know." So I was, "What about Naughty by Nature?" He said, uh, "I need somebody harder." I said, oh, okay. So I said, all right, well, 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 well Biggie. 
yeah. And it's always be, yeah. You, you, you know you know him. I say, yeah. So I call Puff. I say, yo, <laughs> did this is Big Al to work with this Michael Jackson record with me? He's like, yeah. He out now. So Big, in the, he comes out. Me and him sitting in the car smoking and playing a song over and over again. He's just like, yo, I can't believe I'm sitting in the car with you, bro. Writing on some Michael Jackson shit. This is crazy. He's just like, you know. And so he's writing a rhyme. And so after he finished, he says it to me. And I'm like, I don't know. That might be too hard. He's like, no, I'm making a profit, G. I'm a killer motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I ain't joking. Mm-hmm. Then those smoke got me talking. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, I don't no. know my nigga Mike right. like that. Right. Like, <laughs> I love my nigga. Right. And so I was like, all right, well, let's just go play it for him. But I don't know. Mike, you might have to tone down some. I don't know, right? As soon as he played it for right. Michael, like, I love yeah. it. <laughs> That's exactly love what I wanted song. to say. That's, That's just exactly like what I wanted to say. <laughs> like what, what I want to know is. Mike would have did the jam with Freddie Gibbs. Because, you know, at the time, you know, Tom Snedden. Oh, was, yeah, it was a DA. Was on, it, was on his ass. So I know that Mike was was riding the razor of a litigious situation, you know, changing his name around and all that shit. But. I mean, was there anyone that was in the room that's sort of like, hey, dog, you shouldn't talk Probably shit about hard, the yeah. DA that's like... Well, dude, you gotta realize this. During that time, he was the most, you know, sought-after person on the planet. Remember the plane kept landing yeah. in mm-hmm. different places? So he said, he said, he said, Dallas, this was horrible. You know, they, uh, you know, he said the plane was landing in different places and taking off, and they're looking for me, and I'm sitting in the hotel room in Russia looking at it. The, oh, wow. the, the Russian government hit him. And Stranger that's when he wrote Stranger in Moscow. Wow. He's watching it on TV. The planes keep taking off and landing. He, and, but he's in the KGB mm-hmm. is after me. <laughs> he's writing a song, mm-hmm. <laughs> watching this happen. The, the whole world is looking for him. And Russia's hiding him, right? So by the time he comes up from all of this, his history record mm-hmm. was to like show everybody. So the first thing he did was he went and got the whole Brazilian army. <sighs> so when you look at the history trail again, he he... And I was wondering why he told us to do this. He sent us to the Museum of Tolerance. You ever been there on on Pico? In LA? I walked past it. I didn't know no. what was in there. That place is fucked up. So, because you go in there and it's the Museum of Tolerance. It tells you, you know, you walk through, uh, when you first get in there, start calling your names like Spick, Nigger, really? Cracker, White Boy. Yeah. And then you, it shows you uh, what happened to like, all these different races, like, you know, the kids in Africa, kids in, the, in, in, um, in uh, Atlanta where they're spraying the kids with the water hoses and stuff like that so you're going through this whole place and, and at the end that you're in a um in a gas chamber in the holocaust and by the time you get out of that place you just like fuck, everybody's looking at each other all fucked up because you didn't know that this race mm-hmm. did it that people are crying you know and so i'm like why did he make us go see that so i get back and he's take the, the film that they show in there is the is the uh hitler film mm-hmm. and he's got the army and they're marching past these like these pillars and then you see a little dog and then you see the army marching more and then when Hitler gets to the top the flags come down right so Michael mimicked the same film mm. for history right okay so if you look at the history trailer now I got it he yeah. got the whole Brazilian army he went to just say hey can we shoot a thing but the whole Brazilian army goes yeah we'll be in your trailer for your new album so they're marching and they're marching they got a little dog come around, just like the thing, and then the flags come down. It's the same thing. Yeah. Then he had the silver wow. statue with the helicopters flying. Yeah, around, he had the big right? statue. Yeah, right. Yeah. The star. So, yeah. yeah. So when when he started going at Tommy, right, and started going at Sony and all that, the first thing they said was, "Okay, well, you said kike me, and they don't oh, care about I us. Don't care I about that. Take those records off the shelf." So they took all the history records off the shelf. Remember that, right? Because yeah. he said kike me. Yeah. But then it wasn't just kike me. He had the whole Jew me. Right. He, he, he did Everybody. the whole Hitler thing where he oh. mimicked the Hitler video. So they start coming to him hard then, going you know, and for him. So for reference, in case our audience is a little confused, like he he was basically going down the list of everyone in history that's been disparaged and yeah, yeah. spit on or whatever. But again, taken out of context. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, you know. He never saw that one coming either, because that's just yeah, the song. Yeah, both re- like, versions you know. of the records where yeah. both references are on. But yeah, I, I feel like the blackballing of him started really it, when it started then, and it started with that war with him and like Sony, and then ATV, and then it just started that whole. Remember, then, the then he's going down the, 
He's going down to uh, New York City with Al Sharpton and them yeah. on top of the, yeah. the red buses. And yeah. the, you know. Then the videos of him with the FOI and, start and coming the, out. And the video of him where he said, uh, you know, I had to help Mariah out a little bit. You uh-huh. Know? uh-huh. I don't remember. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, one? no. He get, it was oh, that press no, conference. He was at a press conference. He said I had to help her out. Oh. He said she had to come cry on my shoulder a little bit. He turned oh, real Indiana. I'm late. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm late. Oh, no, he turned, yeah. he turned, yeah. Little body rolling. And, yeah. and, and, and his voice got deeper when he said it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Ooh, yeah, you might, yeah. I'm you think you know Mike. I'm Joe Jackson's son. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's from Indiana. That night. Yeah, he was in Indiana. <laughs> it's like wow. <laughs> but what's crazy is he would uh, say like you know he, he would broadcast himself like you know when he when he had the uh, the shirt on and he broadcast himself the red shirt and he's saying I've been humiliated. I've been they you know they checked my house, they checked my private parts, all this. He he took a satellite to Neverland and broadcasted that himself and then said, okay, y'all can tap into this. He's like, so. Because he was in Dallas, if I go to their networks and do it, they're going to cut up my words, and they're going to make it say it's what they want Oprah. me to say. I want to be, con- yeah, I want to be yep. controlled So by he image. told them, okay, anybody want to know what I got to say, y'all, 7 o'clock, you can come into my satellite. And that's that what went all across the That Instagram. was the first IG Live. Right? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Uh, pre, but, pre, but he had relationships with people that the, the most countries didn't have. Like, in, you can go into any country, yeah. and they're going to love Michael Jackson. They might ha- hate our president. They might hate the government. So all different presidents all around the world love him. And when we were at the uh, studio one day, he said, uh, Dallas, I did a hospital in Africa. But look what the United States did. They put on the cover that Michael Jackson thinks Africa stinks because he's holding his nose. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and he said, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this. So Boy. so people are going to come by today from the studio just to thank me or whatever. Dude, it looked like coming to America. <laughs> they came in with the rose petals. Mm-hmm. <gasps> they came in with the giant <laughs> lion heads and gold, and there was a king and queen of some point in Africa coming to thank him for the hospitals and, and what he had done. And <sighs> You know, so when you have that kind of like influence around everybody, it's it is when you get on somebody's bad side, then it's just you got to watch out for everybody. Right. right. You don't know who's coming at you. That kind of power don't exist no yeah. more. Oh no, no, he's the last of that one. Yeah. Okay, just just as a fan and as a per- as a person that had an immense crush, dog man, what happened with for real? For real. I love they that. was so dope. Yeah, okay, wait, side story. Give me remember. Side story. Okay. So maybe the second time I went to, to L.A., uh-huh. um, I was supposed to meet them. It was like four to beautiful the sisters. They all had close crop cold, hair. Cold, little short haircuts. Right. Sexy as shit. Um, they couldn't make it, and I happened to be across the street at a restaurant, like a, a health food thing, and that's how I met the Jazzy Fat Nasties. Oh. Who just then wound up moving in my crib and all that stuff. Oh, and, yeah. But my intention was like to sort of bring for real into, you it was know. like a couple different body they types. They came in out, that like you produced this joint. It was yeah. like straight 60s on the Amy Winehouse yeah. tip and all that stuff. And Like I do it. Yes. Kind of like, Ooh, no one's yes. gonna love you like I do. Yes. They all had short, yes. they were yes. like the original, like before but Erica. Like, was kind of like thick. Yep. Yep. All I remember. Them. No, no, they all were different. I remember this. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm a booty watcher too. But it's, it's weird. Be- yeah, like it's it's weird because like I was looking to like team up with them. There it, there was a group for, called For Real. There was another group called I think Step Brother. Yep. I'll be hanging around. Like like they were like the singing Far Side. Yeah. Like I thought, okay, let me collect them, and then I'll make a crew or whatever. Well, but Step Child. Step, Step Child. Yeah, I knew it. Step Step Child. But yeah, with For Real. Uh, yeah, she ended up. Nisi ended up marrying David Gates, who was my right hand man at Rowdy all those years. Okay, and, and then they even up having children, and then just going on with life. And, I remember know, seeing some of their names on like Stevie Wonder records. So like yep. he would occasionally have them sing background, but I always wanted to know what happened with them, man. Like, yeah. What was the uh, reason for your two labels? You had Rowdy and you had. Um Oh, God, what was that label? You had limp or Rowdy or like uh, limp, 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 yeah. I had limp at EMI just because it was supposed to be like the, the you know the things that were slightly different. Alternative, so, yeah. Okay. And then Clive was giving me junk about Rowdy at the time, you know, because I wanted to keep it Rowdy and not. I didn't even I didn't want to sign acts like Monica. I didn't think it was Rowdy, um, but was I had like, to. Why wasn't she on Rowdy? Well, she was on Rowdy. She that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I had to. Um, I remember seeing on the face. Or, or yeah, she was on Rowdy, but okay. but I had to end up signing her because of all the other debts of Fishbone and other stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know. And so I said, well, let me just go do what I know how to do. And so we ended up signing uh, Monica there. But it was always to kind of offset, you know, having a different brand in different places or the type of music we're making. Is she one of your artists that you always make music? Oh, with? oh I love Monica. She's my. Oh, that's okay, my, I'm scared, but I wanted to. Like do. My, no, <laughs> Monica's like my daughter. Yeah, She's yeah. always been my like. Yeah, she's 
She's got the same team around her that's been around her since we signed her. Oh, good. So when we that's come so back, good. we can get her because that Oh, yeah. Was, okay, she has good. the same. I'm Melinda okay. and I'm a mom. And she's the most. You know, the thing about Mo is that she grew into the songs as she got older because the songs were so grown. So, grown, so yeah. singing Why I Love You So Much Now makes sense. It resonates. And it's like yeah. you hear people singing in the audience. You're like. Well, and when she sings 13. it now, it's like, yeah, she feeling it different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a whole different story now. God, know? she sounds so great still. Yeah. What was the, uh, for, um, for just one of them days, Backseat LL. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's what me and Clive got into it about. That's when I was going to leave Arista because I turned in Don't Take It Personal. And he's just like, oh, man, it needs a bridge. I was like, no, no, no. It's a, she's 14. She's singing over backseat of the Jeep. Just one of them days. Don't take it personal. It's ignorant. It's supposed to be like that. <laughs> yeah. Because they was trying to say, them days? And I'm like... Yeah, but, but her name is Monica Arnold. I did said, you no, know no, no, her name is Monica. the ladies would affiliate <laughs> that? Did you know how we would affiliate that with something biological, or or did you just? I, I, well, it's just one of them days, you know. Like, right. you know it's gonna be, you know, and for her. Because that's I, what when we, I first yeah. saw, when I first saw Monica, she would always come in. She had a little green bra, gold rings on, mm -hmm. and a little sweatsuit with a bunch of little bitty chains on, like you know all the ghetto girls look in in mm. the back then. And she would come in, and she was like, saying the greatest love of all, and she'd be like, "Okay, am I done?" <laughs> uh -huh. And then she's going about her business. And I'm like, damn, this attitude is bigger than us singing. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> and that so story. I kept telling Clive and them, they, they kept trying to come with these Diane Warren and all that. I said, not yet. Mm. It's not yeah. time. You got to sell this attitude. Like, she's D from what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know yes. what I'm saying? She's always in grown folks' business. And she's always like, well, she gave us a PMS like, the anthem. So, yeah, yeah man. we was like, don't take it personal. It's one of I'm days. so proud of what she's grown into just as a mother and a yes. person, period. You know, she she got a, always had her head on straight, always been just like the best. Yeah. Are, are there any? Is there anything that you have yet to do? Is there anything left on the bucket list? Yeah, I mean, what I'm doing now is having D having my own distribution company, DAD. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, over the course of the pandemic, I just dove really hard into my distribution company because I want to make a difference in the way stuff is distributed because we're making no money. So. Luckily, blockchain came along, and now I have a protocol that I launched in November where it would allow you to choose your own streaming rates. So you can choose your own streaming rate on music. You can stream for $10, $0.10, cent, $0.02. Cent. You can stream for a year, five months, whatever. It's up to you. You can sell it. As an artist. As an artist. Okay. For all your content. Okay. And um, I'm implementing it not just on my platform but in other platforms like Amazon. Like I want everybody to use it because that's how we're going to change the wow. course of how uh, the industry is at this point. You know, Spotify and all those blanket license and – the blanket license trip is over. That was a band-aid in the first place. Like, you can't blanket license all of us because that means that nobody's going to make no money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got people, well, I can see people with three, four, five million streams, 10 million streams, and you're still not really yeah. making no money. So, you know, the next step is when we launch this is to, you know, and it's, it's dope. I saw Meek Mill tweet about it one day. He's like, man, as soon as somebody make this direct to consumer to artists, yeah. you know, that, I was like, we already got it. It's launching. You can go to your, to your Apple Pay, your Google Pay, up to 50 contracts on one song. So if all wow. four of us did, all right. writers, yeah, yeah, and it comes to you instantly to everybody. All right, shit. All right, Dallas, what's, awesome. what's crazy is my auntie brain was like, you know, when you hear distribution, it was such, it used to be such a physical word, right? Yeah, it's it's changed. no it's physical, it. nothing no, about nah. it no more. So user generated content killed that. Soldier Boy killed that off because the minute you can make it in the Mac and then distribute it to your MySpace or Facebook or whatever it was, that was that ended up being distribution. So it took yeah. away all the trucks and machines and, and brick and mortar and stores. Brick and mortar stores yeah. and warehouses and all that. And you know, we distributed over two hundred DSPs. So like, because back in the day, a person, a, a person like you saying, "I have a distribution company," that it was no such thing. Yeah, like this is no the like, dream. This yeah. is why people went to labels because they had no distribution. Had no digital, yeah. So I'm just like. Yeah. I love it because I see people signed up from around the world, children's books, Cuba, Canada, everywhere, just all yeah. kinds of stuff. And so because I'm a music person, I don't really – the volume is one thing, and most distribution companies about how much volume can we get because that's how they make money. Okay. And I'm about like, no, who's really dope? <laughs> so I'm like, you see me on Sundays just scrolling through my backside, looking at labels, looking at what they got, clicking in, who is this, what music is it? And for, I have to say, we don't – I haven't seen a lot of badass like music that would come through there. Like, it's a DIY. You can load up at home, but – I think they're trying to live up to the standard of my songwriting or my brand in a way. Yeah. And it's really good music that comes. So I'm like, we got to help these people out. So are you pissing all the labels? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Soon comes. Soon comes. It's, it's come. Come. We're going to disrupt that process. Yeah, this, that process this, is old. Yes. Well, well, we got to think for the future. And, and, and you can't think of how they did it or done it and all that. It's just done already. You know? Man. Fonte, is I, there one, one, la one okay. last question we'll um, about um, just two 
just two songwriters that I've never really talked to anyone that like knew him. Um, Arnold Hennings. Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Y'all asked about everybody to just call him my phone. <laughs> oh word. That was oh Arnold wow. outside like motherfucker. <laughs> right right right. <laughs> Arnold Hennings and uh, and also uh, Deborah Killings. Oh Deborah. You know I mean? Deborah's like the best kept Atlanta secret. Yeah she. Um, is. She 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 sung on every song I've ever done from like all the backgrounds on Creep or What About Your Friends or like all the Outcast records and she's an amazing bass player. Her bass player. Yeah. And I was like, Come she's on. a bass player. And Arnold, he did Don't Cupid. Stop. He did Cupid once well, but yep. he also did uh, the Take Our Time joint. I yep. thought that was you for the longest yep. on the uh, TLC album. Yeah, that was sure my did. Arnold Hiddens was dope, man. It's like, I, uh, one of the things I, I, I did when I came in the game is like I bought producers together to try to give them the opportunity I wish I had. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of me getting ripped off or, and work for higher contracts or whatever, I was like, well, let me just find people that are dope and then give them the same opportunity, but then make it where they're going to make their money. Mm -hmm. You know, so Arnold Hennings, Tim and Bob. Tim novel. and Bob, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, Tim and Bob went on to be, you know, yeah, way out of here. It, yeah. yeah, bro. So I, I, we just love music like that, and I just want to make it where I, I feel bad when, I mean, I feel glad that I came up in an era where we made money. Right. Um, but now it's just you know it's it's, it's shady. It's sixty thousand records going out, out out there, and it's not enough. It's just not enough money in that blanket license to pay everybody. Uh, okay, now I forgot my initial question. You brought that up. Okay. Okay. Why didn't Silly Hope ho <laughs> take off <laughs> like I wanted to? Yo, Justice for Silly Hope. No, he, I'm serious because did. it was like it should have had a video. It, 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 it sounded so industrial. Yeah, like bro. I felt like Rhythm Nation meets like. Nine Inch Nails. Uh, yes, yeah, and, yeah, and all that shit. Yeah, Fan Mail was one of my favorite albums I did because uh, it was it, it was it, just the concept alone. Lisa first came in one day. She goes, "Yo, I got a concept. It's called Fan Mail, and we can put all the artist names on the back that that, that sent us letters from the fire and all this." And I said, "Oh yeah, that is brilliant. I can hear that already. I know what to do." And then she goes, "Yeah," and then the rest of it's called Fan2C.com. And I said, what is that? Well, you know, we could be playing with ourselves and doing this and that. Oh, oh wow. No, what? Now, now what's I interesting is... Well, OnlyFans. She was, was the first OnlyFans. Right? She always was ahead of her it time. Was, it was what OnlyFans is. Now, back then, of course, me and all the rest of the girls were like, are you crazy? Yeah. You know, she's like, well, look him doing it and this person doing it. We got to be like... And so then, because me and the girls were like, uh, no, we can't come off waterfalls and you guys are having, you know, people play, play with yourself and mm, give you money. <laughs> and then she goes, right. uh, okay, well, I quit. <laughs> Oh wow! That's when she quit. That's when she quit the second time. Oh. She closed, so she quit right at the beginning of fan mail, and so then I had to like so all the all the all the so I created virtual Vicky. I had to go to my computer and take the voices, sample each word, and make them rap. Like you know, you can't get with this one night. You just go and bust. Pioneer Ho to give it up because oh. you couldn't have no rhythm. So you had to put it on the keys to make it have rhythm because she quit and we didn't have a rapper. So I said, "Fuck it, we create a rapper." And we created the virtual Vicky character, right? Mm. So in the beginning, she goes, "Welcome." We dedicated this album to everybody that sent us fan mail. That's computer talking, just like you. I get lonely too. That's computer. The silly whole rap. The, all the way up to the whole record. You created she the first AI rapper. I'm a sucker. <laughs> See, aren't you glad that I asked that question? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. wasn't. Uh, it worked out. And, and so when we did Silly Ho, we had we had the album done, but we didn't have no scrubs. And so I heard uh, I went over to, to uh, Tricky and Shakespeare's because I I had them working on um I had Shake and Tricky working on the JT Money stuff for me at the time. Like who that? Oh, who that? Yeah, yeah. right. So um, when I went to check on that, they played me no scrubs, and it was for Candy and Tiny. And I was like, oh, I'm like, oh. give me that song for TLC. I'll make it a single. Silly Ho, it just rolled out as like a pre. Right. It was like they were about scene. to do all that. Yeah. BB Gangster. But I'm like, if you give me that song, um, I'll put Chili on the verses, which we haven't done before, and then this will be their single. Mm. They said, you guarantee it. I said, I guarantee you, give me that song, we'll make it a single. And so then, because No Scrub came in last like that. So wait, t Tiny and, and, and oh, Lord, Tiny. How, t Lord, I forget Candy. Tiny and Candy not pissed at all. Did oh, they understand oh. the Did potential? They find out they even know it was oh, no, no, they was happy they, because they, they wrote, wrote it. it. That's what I'm saying. So they oh, weren't okay. pissed at all that they didn't have to sing. Oh, no, they wrote like, it. Oh, they and they then that took, it. that's what made Candy take Hell off. Yeah. Like After No Scrubs, then Bugaboo and Destiny, all that stuff started to come on her and Shakespeare. So that was like, you know. I remember that. Yeah. Well, since you mentioned it, it, is Tron doing anything musically now? Or? Tron's doing music. He's doing his his own. How old is he now? Twenty five. Good God! I'm this sorry. Is, I can't even is, imagine Tron. People's Tron kids is. Make me so old. Chili son. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, got yeah. You. He's making me old. All right, I, I gotta wrap up. I yeah, gotta wrap. Up. I gotta go DJ an 80s party. So oh. this is awesome. Wait, <laughs> wait, I'm getting on the plane right now, but <laughs> miss my plane, <laughs> dog. I, I, we've been waiting for this. This is way beyond yeah, uh, thank what you, man. we oh, expected. Thank you. I didn't think you were gonna come with. Stories I, and 
Oh man, I've, I'm walking stories all my life, bro. I've, I've worked with so I've been blessed to work with so many people. That the next just, movies just will like, be. What's the, I'm just saying, Dallas. Well, I got a couple of them coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, yo, from Sugar Steve and Laia and Fontecolo and Unpaid Bill. The, the great Dallas Austin, thank you. Oh, oh, thank, thank you, man. This is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the music, man. I for real. It. This is awesome. It. And uh, we will see you next time. Quest Love Supreme. Check it out later. <laughs>